Good afternoon, I'm Connor James. First at four, a Floyd County man facing murder charges appeared in front of a judge today. On the other side of the bar was the family of the man. Police say he killed and buried behind his house. WYMT's Will Puckett was in the courtroom and has more from Floyd County. All of Jordan Tackett's family members were in a Floyd County courtroom this afternoon as his alleged murderer, Wesley Martin, answered to his charges. Martin pleaded not guilty to his murder charge, where his lawyer asked his bond to be dropped from two million. The judge obliged, reducing it to 250,000, saying he was worried about his persistent felony offender status. Members of Jordan Tackett's family say they are worried about what this case may do to their family. Is we're just all going to face this. It was an emotional court appearance on behalf of Jordan Tackett's family. As Wesley Martin was walking out of the courtroom, one of them yelled, you are a monster. They consoled that person afterwards as they exited the courtroom quietly. In Floyd County, Will Puckett, WYMT, Mountain News. Martin is due back in court on July 25th. So far, 16 parents have decided to fight the charges against them in the massive college admission scandal, including actress Lori Laughlin and her husband, Massino Giannulli. Nearly two weeks after facing charges in Boston federal court, Laughlin and her husband made clear that they're not giving in to federal prosecutors. The two pleaded not guilty yesterday, all but ensuring a lengthy legal battle with the two. They're charged with pair paying $500,000 to guarantee both of their daughters admission into the University of Southern California. If they have real physical evidence against Lori Lachlan, she and her husband are going to be in for a quick guilty verdict and a big punishment. A source tells CBS News federal prosecutors have sent letters to some of the parents' adults, children believed to have known about the scam, indicating they could also face criminal charges. For Laughlin and her husband, legal experts say there's still time to change their plea before they go to trial. And today marks the 12th anniversary of a shooting at Virginia Tech. For many people across the state and country, today is about remembering the 32 people who lost their lives that day, honoring their legacy and remembering how the school has moved forward from the mass shooting. When the clock strikes midnight tonight, a candle is lit at the remembrance of the memorial on VA Tech's campus. Well, today was a lot sunnier and warmer than it was yesterday. We saw those blue skies return and those 70s return as well. You'll notice here as we take a look at our Stonecrest camera, you're seeing beautiful sunshine and those blue skies. You'll also notice everything looking a lot greener as we head into your Tuesday. Now, satellite and radar, you'll notice no rain, no clouds. It's been an absolutely beautiful day and a lot and much needed beautiful day after the past couple of days. Now, temperatures are into those mid to upper 70s, so feeling amazing outside especially compared to yesterday. We had that southwesterly flow return today about 5, 10 to 15 miles per hour in some spots, and that's allowing us to warm up very quickly. And really, as we head throughout the rest of the evening, we will continue to see that warming trend continue that actually continues into your Wednesday and into your Thursday. By the time we get to your good Friday, though, we're looking at soggy conditions returning back into the forecast. I think that continues into your Saturday as well. And we will be clearing by Easter Sunday. Will we be dry for those Easter egg hunts? I'll have that full forecast coming up for you in just a little bit, Connor. All right, thanks, Paige. West Virginia officials are trying a new method to contain an underground mine fire that's been burning for at least three years. Officials told the Dominion Post that they think the fire jumped a barrier installed two years ago in the Preston County mine. They say work will begin this summer at Brocombe Mine Number 1. He says the Department of Environmental, Environmental Protection plans to inject a new nitrogen-based foaming agent into mine voids prior to grouting. And we will have to wait a little longer before getting our new Kentucky driver's licenses. The Transportation Cabinet says the new IDs will be available sometime this spring. They were originally supposed to launch last month and then pushed back to early April. People in Woodford and Franklin counties will be the first to apply for the new licenses. The change makes Kentucky compliant with the Real ID Act once that goes into effect on October of 2020. You'll need the new IDs to fly or go into federal buildings. And the Justice Department plans a partial release of Special Counsel Robert Mueller's report tomorrow morning. 
The 400-page report from special counsel Robert Mueller will be made public, but Attorney General William Barr plans to redact grand jury testimony, classified information, and material related to ongoing investigations. In Barr's four-page summary, the attorney general said the Mueller report did not find conspiracy or coordination between the president or his campaign and Russia. I'm not concerned about anything because, frankly, there was no collusion and there was no obstruction. And we never did anything wrong. The public needs to see the whole report. No executive privilege, no redacting. Eventually, it all comes out. CBS News confirms the special counsel team was split on whether the president obstructed justice with some investigators believing the president had committed a crime. The president's lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, says he plans to release a rebuttal to the Mueller report to minimize any politically damaging information that it may contain. A new era for the Environmental Protection Agency officially begins. Andrew Wheeler, Wheeler was sworn in as administrator this afternoon. President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence were on hand for the ceremony. Wheeler is a former lobbyist for the coal industry who has been the EPA's acting administrator since last summer. He replaced Scott Pruitt, who stepped down from the position because of ethical controversies. Wheeler says he does not reject climate change, but says it's not the most urgent crisis the White House is facing. And we have a recall you need to know about. The makers of Chips Ahoy has issued a voluntary nationwide recall of one of its popular cookies. Mondelez International announced Saturday the recall for certain 13-ounce packages of Chewy Chips Ahoy. The company cited a possible, quote, unexpected solidified ingredient that led to, quote, reports of potential adverse health effects. Customers who have the product should not eat it. The company says you can call 1-844-366-1171. For more details about the recall, you can also go to their website, mandelasinternational.com, for ways to identify if you have the recalled cookies. The retail universal product code and best when used by dates are the affected products are listed. It was a special day yesterday for a United States Marine who ran the Boston Marathon. Micah Herdnon now runs with tags on his shoes to remember his two friends and a journalist killed in Afghanistan. All three served alongside him. As the crowds were cheering him on, he was struggling, but he was determined to finish the race, even if he had to crawl in pain across the finish line. One way for me to uh, deal with everything is to get in my own zone, my own headspace, and just go. The reason why I run is for them. The running has helped him ease the weight of PTSD, and the Boston Marathon always has been in his sights. He hopes his powerful display of determination can help inspire others who may be struggling. <laughs> Heading over to Wall Street on this Tuesday afternoon, the Dow closes up more than 67 points. And Game of Thrones is all the rage right now. Game of Thrones... The millions of people tuned in Sunday night to watch the first episode of the eighth and final season of the HBO series. And there was tons of social media chatter about the episode. I know I was part of that. A shop in Red Bank, Tennessee, way out in front of the craze. It is one of the few stores with permission to sell replicas of the swords seen in the show. When Game of Thrones is on the air, it's like our Christmas. Uh, we do more sales than any other time uh, during the year. Uh, it's really just crazy how high the volume gets, and there's been a buildup until the season starts, and then, you know, this weekend it just exploded. The shop owner says he reached a deal with author George R.R. R. Martin several months before HBO got the rights to make the show. He says he never expected the show to be this popular. And an actress on The Mary Tyler Moore Show has died. A friend of, a friend of Georgia Engel says she died Friday. Engel was best known for her role as a small voice Georgette on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. She also had reoccurring roles on Everybody Loves Raymond and Hot in Cleveland. Engel received two Emmy nominations for Moore's show and three for Everybody Loves Raymond. She was 70. Well, straight ahead on First at Four, some southeastern Kentucky students took a senior trip to Paris last week. Hear from them on why that trip is now so special. And sunshine and warmer temperatures continue, but for how long? We'll break down that full forecast in just a few short minutes. 